We have Pete Samuels here from Ping. We're inside Ping, right? People buy their club, custom fit. We build them here right in the headquarters. Tell me about the process. Exactly. So we uh, have our fitters out around the world. They go out, fit people. They send the orders into us. We create what we call a work order. We also call this the birth certificate because this gives us all the details, all the specifications for this particular set of irons. So let's take a look and see how we really custom build clubs. It all starts with the work order, and what this work order tells us is everything about that particular set of irons. So the first thing we do is we look at the work order, and it tells us it's a set of G irons, four through nine pitching wedge. So the team here will go to these boxes, pull four through nine pitching wedge of the G iron, and then they'll start the process. The first thing they do is they're gonna paint the color code dot, which is the lie angle. Uh, many years ago, Karsten Solheim brought custom fitting to the game of golf, and he introduced the ping color code chart, which includes now 12 different color codes which correspond to the lie angle of the club. Behind us, we have the serial number process. You know, back in the day, Karsten Solheim had this unique plan, and this is unique to Pink. Very unique. Yeah, Karsten started this back in the 1970s, so way back then, he realized what a great value a serial number could offer to a set of clubs because it allows us to keep a record of all the specifications of that particular set of irons or whatever it might be. First we got the work order right, now we got the serial number. Now we're into a cell where the club is actually built. Exactly, this is where it really becomes a golf club, right? Up until now we've had a head, we've had shafts, and we've got grips. Now we're gonna make it into a golf club. What happens here is the first thing they do is they're gonna shaft it, right? They're gonna put the head onto the shaft, and then it's gonna work its way around the entire cell. It's gonna come out the other end finished in a box, ready for shipment to the consumer. So it's very easy, you're just going down and you're coming back. Exactly, it's a big U shape, okay? So every part of the iron assembly process and calibration takes place in here. Now Pete, walking around here, you see a lot of advanced technology, a lot of machines that are advanced. Um, I'm pretty sure you can't find these at a store down the street, right? <laughs> That's right. So when you look at our process, it's, it's very unique. It's custom, as we've talked about. So in order to perform a lot of the operations we need to build a golf club, we had to invent and create the machines ourselves. And this goes back to Carson's day. So when he came up with his, his idea for how a golf club should be made, he created the tools, the machines, and the processes to execute on his vision. So we very much follow that philosophy today. Pete, we know these clubs are working. A little birdie tells me there's like some sort of vault here that we can go take a look at. Well, the, the clubs do work very well um, as we see on a daily basis, both with uh, consumers and tour professionals. So we do have a little evidence that they they work really well for tour pros. We're gonna take a look at the Ping Gold Putter Vault, which shows just how many uh, professionals have won with a Ping Putter over the years. So Pete, we made the club. We know these clubs are working. You brought us to this amazing room right now, filled with gold clubs. What is this all about? Well, the history of this particular room dates back to Karsten Solheim's days. And um, in the early 1970s, he was looking for a way to acknowledge professionals that had won with his putter. So keep in mind, this is early 70s. Ping is starting to become a major player uh, in the putter market. A lot of tour players using Ping putters, and a lot of tour players winning with Ping putters. So Karsten wanted to acknowledge them in a unique way. He didn't want to just write them a check, which was sort of the norm back then, like, here's $500, here's $1,000, thanks. He came up with this idea of gold putters. So uh, what he did is when there was a win, he would make two gold-plated replicas of the model used by the professional, uh, built to the exact specs. So what he did is he engraved the, the player's name 
and the name of the tournament and the year um, that they won on the putter, made two of them, gave one to the player as a keepsake, put another one, back then it was in his closet, believe it or not, but it's grown, the closet has grown into this vault. So it's a tradition that started way back in the 70s, one we're very proud of, and our goal is to add putters every weekend if possible. That means we're winning, so that's a good thing. Well, thank you for letting us come into this room. Uh, I know not many people get to see and hear and, and look at all these amazing putters, so we appreciate this amazing experience. You're very welcome. We're glad you got to see it and glad to get to have you share it with all your viewers because we wish everybody could come see it, but that's not possible today, maybe someday. There you go. Thank you very much.